Hey you folks, so tonight I want to see if I can't get this new IPS LCD kit installed here. Uh, so this, let me pop this bad boy open here. Alright. So this is for a Game Boy Color here, and you might notice uh, it's not the funny playing kit. This is actually from a different manufacturer. This is the same manufacturer that makes the... Um, the one chip kits. Uh, so they made the little TFT. Pull this tape off here. So they made the TFT kit that's in here. Um, they made most recently the original Game Boy IPS kits. And uh, while well, they figured they'll try their hands at uh, Game Boy Color IPS kit. Now this does use the exact same LCD as the funny playing version of the kit, so the install itself is going to be largely identical, except that it uses a uh, PCB with a detachable ribbon instead of just that whole ribbon cable uh, PCB hybrid thing. Uh, now you might notice there are two touch connectors and um, well, I'll show you what those do when we get there. Uh, but this is what the kit comes with. There is one extra thing the kit comes with that is not shown here. And I will go ahead and apologize in advance because, well, quite frankly, I... It's just a mix-up in shipping. Um, the kit will come with uh, the the adhesive gasket. So you, you peel it off, you apply it to the inside of the shell, and then you stick your LCD in there. And... Um, that, that hold, that's what holds the LCD in place. It's really sticky. The funny playing kit comes with it, and normally this kit does too. I just, I just don't have one. Uh, so I guess let's get down in, get down to it. Uh, I'm going to be using this Game Boy Color. Now, normally I try and use a Game Boy Color that is stock, or at least that I've returned to stock for these types of videos. Uh, but in this case, I do really want to use this motherboard in particular, and I don't know, kind of really like this shell. So I want to use this shell too. So I just figured it would be a waste of my time really to take it apart, drop a stock screen in it, put it back together, and then pretend it was my first time taking it apart. Uh, so yes, I have taken this thing apart very, very many times, uh, and... It already has a backlight kit in it, but we're going to go ahead and upgrade the backlight kit. Uh, I did go ahead and grab a Game Boy Color stock screen out of my parts drawer, though, that will hook up to this just so we can run some power usage tests. Now, I have already run power usage tests on this motherboard, and I have the same game cart that I used to test it, but we'll run those tests again just to get a baseline, just in case for some reason something changed. I seriously doubt that's anything like that happened, but... Better to play it safe. All right. But so far, everything that I've done is the same as it would be on a stock Game Boy. And even though I'm not using that um, that adhesive gasket, I do highly recommend using one with a caveat, right? Just know that if you do use it, once your screen is in the case, it's married. You cannot remove the LCD from that case without damaging the LCD. It is very sticky. Okay. So in this particular case, because this is an LCD kit, it's actually a little bit more complicated to remove, but that's okay. I've been using this Game Boy as a test for all those, um, all those like defective kits that I've been sent. And uh, I'm not sure if I just left a defective kit in this Game Boy or if I just took it apart too many times and ended up wearing out the connections on it but the LCD does show quite a bit of interference uh, 
I'll I'll save that for another video though. I'm sure you guys didn't come here for TFT kits. Oh, but yeah, this is this is actually the high vision kit. This isn't even the same maker that makes this one. But, woo! Dropping it. Oh well. We'll save that for another Game Boy. All right. So before I get into, eh, no, we'll we'll jump right into cutting and then we'll do the testing later. So. There is quite a bit of cutting involved with this kit. Uh, I have been told that there is a um, there's a new kit on the way from this manufacturer that uses a different LCD that should result in less cutting. Should, uh, but I have no idea when that kit's coming. I, I don't know if it's like a month from now or six months from now or what. But as far as the cuts go, we need to cut from here all the way over to here and then on top from this first line right here we'll cut this and this and this and this all the way over to right here including cutting these two out we can leave that third one but we need to cut these two because this LCD it's a chunky boy, it takes up all this space here. We also need to cut, I'm gonna set these aside before I set something down on them mistakenly. Take this out too. We also need to cut a little bit of this right here. The instructions say we need to cut the D-pad as well but I've never done that with one of these and it's been fine so far. So I think we're gonna be fine. It just barely, barely interferes. So I think we'll be good. All right, so now's the part where you probably wanna look away because I'm going to be doing, actually, hang on. We're gonna do one thing first. I'm going to go ahead and remove this lens this is a uh, this is a custom lens. This isn't one of the lenses that you get with those kits. This I actually ordered custom from Bluish Squirrel because at the time I couldn't get those other lenses. And if we're being frank, I kind of regret it because the print quality just isn't really that great. But I don't really know what happened to my order. Like this should be purple, the O. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, this LCD is not going to be usable with this, or this lens isn't going to be usable with this kit, so let's go ahead and pop it out. I'm using this rag here so that I don't get fingerprints all over the inside. But if you don't care about the LCD, there's zero reason to use that rag. And then I'll have to scrape up that tape because bluish squirrel lenses don't come with pre-applied adhesive. Thankfully, I didn't use the crazy stuff. Comes up pretty easily, so I can I can reuse this no problem. I'll just have to apply new tape. But we'll come back to that. I just want to set this aside. Okay. All right. So we do also want to remove this uh, gasket. I'm going to leave mine installed because I'm not using the sticky gasket that comes with the kit because mine didn't come with one but uh, if you are using that sticky gasket you want to remove this one but I'm gonna leave mine installed for now okay so let's go ahead and get started here I'm going to try and do all of the cuts with flush cutters, despite the fact that I do own the actual proper tool to do this, a Dremel. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to use flush cutters. I'm going to use a razor blade. The 
idea is we will score the plastic right at the uh, right at the bottom and then we can try and snap it off I suppose if we just tried scoring it enough times we would just cut through it entirely so if you've got that kind of time on your hands go nuts When using a knife like this, it's always important to think about uh, if the knife slips, where's it going to go? So if you're holding it like this and the knife slips, it's going to go into your finger. So don't hold it like that. I usually try to think about those sort of things, but I don't always. And You guys call me out in the comments when I do. That one's going to be tough to get because my flush cutters don't really fit in there. But this one, probably just bend it. Yep. Hmm. All right. Use my pliers here. And I am going to have to clean this up because it is a clear shell and you'll be able to see that break through to, to the front. Luckily it's pretty dark color so it's not going to be that obvious. But with enough scores, it breaks pretty easily. And for those of you who are sitting here watching this video, looking at what I'm doing to a somewhat limited edition shell, just keep in mind how many of these things that they sold and that this one's mine and I can do whatever the hell I want with it. And I know it's not a full limited edition, it just wasn't sold outside of Japan. And even in Japan, it was only sold at Toys R Us. There we go. Actually, you can't even see it from the outside, all the cuts. I mean, you can under the lens here, but there will be a lens there. All right, I forgot to score this side. Now it's always tough with that, uh, that protrusion in the shell here. I don't think aftermarket shells have that, so I think aftermarket shells are quite a bit easier to get trimmed. But, of course, I'm not using an aftermarket shell. I'm going to have to do that one again.
All right. Why are my tweezers not gripping that little hair? There we go. All right, now we need to get this part here. And I think the easiest way to do it, let me, uh, let me pop an LCD in here. I swear my cat was nowhere near this. Okay. That'll go. Oh, I still need to do quite a bit more trimming. I think we did a test fit. If you do the trim just right, you don't have to use a bracket or anything. LCD will just hold into place. You'll be good to go. I seriously doubt that's I'm gonna get that lucky though. So I have a bracket. Oh shoot! I broke this uh, this post for the the. Uh, the membrane. Oh well. It's kind of what I was worried about because I'd taken this thing apart and put it back together so many times the screw posts were starting to wear out. So I figure might as well give it a retirement with a kit that I probably will never take apart again. Oh yeah, forgot to trim that. Oh, I was in the middle of saying something. But I got distracted trying to test that. Okay, so I still need to trim more on this side, but it's still good enough. And we can see with these markings here that I need to cut like that. And like that. And you do not need to remove that whole thing. Just top here. And I'm going to try scoring it. Oops, I slipped. Oh well, it shouldn't be noticeable. It's not that big of a scratch. Oh, I just thought about this. I should be scoring it from the inside, actually, because I have to bend it out. Let's try that again. Should break along the scores. Noise. And I do need to actually trim that down a little bit more. But we're just going to shave it with the knoif. Now, fall one as planned. Oh, it still doesn't fit because I forgot to cut a little bit more off. I'll just cut both sides so I have a little bit of wiggle room. That 
should sit in there just like that. But it doesn't, because something is interfering. You need to cut the top. I'm just going to cut it all the way to that first support there. There we go. So yeah, I was kind of worried about that. I figured that might happen. So I went ahead and got this prepared. This is the retro modding bracket. It just goes in like that. And there's actually another part to this that goes down here that I did print, I just don't have right here, but we can use this side here to line up the LCD. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I might just make a spacer for that. We just line it up on that side. Bob Gianti. Oh, there it goes. Oh, no, I still need to trim a little bit more. It was this side that, was, that I didn't have lined up. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot how loud those things are. So then this will go in there. This will go like that. Oh man. I have to keep trimming more and more. I didn't have the LCD placed right when I made my marks. So now as you can see, it's not quite lined up. Now it should fit nicely. Boom. Just snaps in, and that'll go just like that. And again, I'm gonna leave the protective film on because you can't actually see anything with it except for that little red tab there. But half that's gonna be under the lens anyway. And I'm thinking if I leave the protective film on, when I, uh, if I go to make changes to this eventually, I can peel it off. But I have a habit, if you can't tell from all these fingerprints, of just sticking my fingers on the lens. And that always, it never looks good. So I'm just going to cut my losses and give myself an out in the future. But I will be sticking this down with some double-sided tape. Luckily, last time with this lens I used the cheap stuff. Oh, 
Oh, now the problem is I'm not sure if it goes vertically which way it goes. I suppose I can solve that by just testing it. Well, let me take a quick peek at the instructions here. Um, they don't really show anything. That's probably my fault for looking at retromodding instructions. Because they expect you to use their bracket too. But, I'm thinking we should have enough space to slip this thing in here. I made that mistake with my uh, with this one here. Okay. All right, let's get some double sided tape. Oh wait, there's already this gasket. I guess I'm not using it because it's not making any contact with the LCD. Alright, what tape should I use? Oh, I can use this stuff. This will work nicely. I'm saying that. I can't even get it separated. I think... Storing it like this was a mistake. Because the sides leak together. All right, so I can use this stuff. This is basically permanent. My single only concern is how thick it is, but I think it should be fine. Uh, I'd have to be careful up here. So I can try and trim this even flatter. get in there without a Dremel or a milling machine. <laughs> I could use this stuff. That'll work. <laughs> uh, it'll never come out if I use this. Not that that's an issue. I'm sorry, I should have made this decision before I started this video. One moment, I'm going to pause and think about it. Right, so I've made my decision and I decided that, you know, if it's worth doing something, something worth doing right, whatever. Uh, so I went with the uh, sticky 3M, t oh no, I cut that one just a little bit too short. Okay, shoot, I'm going to have to redo this one. Um, the reason I want to redo this one is because this... LCD, this this gasket, basically, as it were, also serves to prevent the ingress of dust. So I'm just going to cut this one entirely too short. And then I'll take one of my longer cutoffs here. I'll stick it in. Right there. And that should be better. Goodness, I hope that's enough. Oh shoot, I did the same thing. Right there. Ugh. Okay, it's okay. I have one last try at this. One last try. Maybe this stuff isn't as sticky as I thought it was. No idea what kind of tape it is. I bought it many years ago. Already completely forgotten. Oh, 
Um, clearly I wasn't pressing hard enough that time. There we go. There we go. Only took three tries. All right, so before I put the LCD in here, I am going to put the lens on because I have learned my lesson many times over. Oh, I hate when that part doesn't come off. And you can save these for uh, if you ever need some double-sided tape. This will go on there just like that. And it's time to stick the lens or the LCD in. Peeling up this backing. There we go. I don't think this one's ever going to be perfect because there's what one, two, three, four, five different pieces. It's never going to be dust tight. All right, I'm just going to give it a quick blast of compressed air. Now we're going to take this thing, hold the bracket on, peel that, and I know what I said, but Oh, shoot. I gotta actually put it in the right spot. Where's my sponge? Oh, I might have already ruined this build. Oh, I think that came up safely. I think we'll be okay. There we go. There we go. That's not too bad. Okay, let's go ahead and continue the build here. Now, I'm probably going to have to remove this bracket, and that's completely okay. No, I'm definitely going to have to remove this bracket because the PCB isn't going to fit under here. But now that the LCD is located, it'll be okay. All right, and the manufacturer actually wants you to take this film here, attach this insulating film to the metal surface on the back of the screen. They want you to stick it right here. To insulate the LCD. So I will do exactly that. I'm going to take a little bit of tape and put it in right here to try and um, close this gap, just, just to help with dust. And I'm going to use 
my favorite tape here. This ultra wide captain. I really don't need the wide stuff for this, but it's stuff that's easy to get to. Probably don't need tape at all. But oh well. Yeah. Cut it just a wee bit too long. Easy to fix though. Oh wow, that's sticking down real good. So the purpose of this tape was really just to close this gap, if there was one. I really don't think there was, but just plain it safe. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Um, I'm gonna set this aside for a moment because now, well, actually this one's already done. The next step would be trimming all of these cart uh, reader pins flush and this battery connector flush. And again, that's just something you can do with flush cutters. You just snip each one individually. And you can go ahead and take a look at my original video for the funny playing version. I'll throw a card up and uh, throw a link in the description there. But it's literally this exact PCB that I already trimmed. And that's why I wanted to use this PCB for this mod. Not because it was already trimmed, but because I've already tested this PCB with the funny playing kit. And now we need to find this bad boy. Because we're going to do some testing now. Before we move on, I think 11 volts is a little bit too high for a Game Boy Color. I would like 2.40 on the dot, but that's probably not happening. <gasps> Just kidding! Nice. Bring this up a little. Now I do have to be careful, this bale is broken. I broke it because I was being hasty. But as long as I go slowly, there should be no issues. And I'm going to test with Pokemon Silver, the same cart that I think I tested it originally with. So in the overworld here at 2.39 volts, pulling between 76 and 78 milliamps. Let's see what we get with the new kit. Actually, before I test the new kit, I'm just going to continue the install here so that I don't have to test this bare wires and, and all. Just leave that on. All right. So now this goes in there. And oh, yep, yeah, we will need to trim that just a little bit. But don't worry, that's a super easy trim. Just need flush cutters and then. 
Ooh. Okay, that should be plenty. Now it can't possibly interfere. I'm missing something pretty big and obvious here because it's underneath that paper. And we need this part. Oh, so I just did something really dumb and hopefully I didn't ruin it when I did that, but I'm going to point out what I did so that you guys don't do that. When I attached this, I pushed straight down on the LCD. Now the LCD, there's it's basically floating where I pushed it down, so it's it's a lever acting on that pivot there. So when you attach it, put a spudger in there to relieve some of the pressure, or even attach it like this and squeeze this way, then fold that down. Hopefully I didn't just ruin this thing, because uh, that was really dumb. Uh, I need a little bit more tape here, because... I want this thing to not move around. Good lord, hopefully I didn't just break this thing, that's going to be a friggin' tragedy. I just had a thought we could put this sensor down here and probably get it through the uh, touch screen. But all right, they do actually want you to do one more thing. I'm going to run that underneath the ribbon. You'll notice it chips with two of these films. The intention is to stick the second one over top again, and it's just to prevent this from shorting on anything here. And again, I think it's fine, but we'll follow their instructions because last time I went off the uh, went off and improvised. I gave bad advice, and people screwed down those extra two screws on the DMG IPS kit and started messing up their button inputs. But in my defense, I'm not the only one who makes videos. Anyway, that's besides the point. Yeah, like I said, my bail is broken. So it does fall out, but it still works fine as long as you uh, don't lose it. Okay, that's in there. I bump this nice. Try it out. Maybe I didn't ruin it. Oh. <laughs> Never had a doubt. <laughs> All right, so in the overworld at the default brightness, we're pulling 229 milliamps. So it's quite a significant increase. Let me kill these lights so you can see this thing a little bit better. Oh, that was already off. We'll do more testing once I get it together, but let's check out the brightness.
These sensors work better when they're not just floating. I think this is about the cutoff of my tool here. Oh, and that's fine because that's as high as it goes. So as low as it goes is about 200. And as high as it goes, I believe is about 344. 345, 46, yeah. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine brightness levels. Interesting choice. And you may have noticed there are two uh, touch sensors on this kit. The other sensor actually changes the built-in palettes. Uh, this kit has built-in color palettes that you can change. It's, it's pretty cool. Let's check it out. So we can set it to black and white, blue, green, red, pink, olive, even more pink, <laughs> and then the default and I accidentally hit the brightness one. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's pretty dumb. Game Boy Color already has built-in palettes. Yes. Yes, it does, but what the Game Boy Color does not have is built-in palettes in Game Boy Color games or Game Boy Color enhanced games. So let's go ahead and take a look at another game here. I think you guys might have heard of this small indie title called Pokemon Yellow Edition. We'll boot this up and notice you can't do any of the button combos to set a color palette in this game. It's not supported in Pokemon Yellow. It's just the way it is. You have to deal with their built-in palettes. And uh, once we get in game here, so yeah, it, the palette will change depending on where you are. Um, so I'm in Cerulean City, so it's blue, but we can uh, tap that sensor, change it to black and white, dark blue, green, red, pink-ish, yellow, olive rather, super pink, I don't know, that looks way better on camera than it does in person, and then back to the default. So yeah, that's wicked cool I think, but let's go ahead and continue the, let's go ahead and finish up the install before we play more with that. Alright. So this sensor need to make sure it goes under. There we go. And I have spoken with the um, with Retro Game Repair Shop. They do have a uh, direct line with the manufacturer of this kit, and I believe he mentioned that he wants to. Uh, he, he pitched to the factory that these kits should have optional solderable brightness controls and palette controls because I know not everyone has good luck with these things. They work fine for me, but I understand I am not everyone. Okay. And this one, they intend for you to put it in the IR window, but I think that's dumb. I don't like shoving these things in there and deleting functionality. My only concern is putting it right here where the uh, LCD is might get some sort of weird interference or something like that. But I think, I think we can try it out and worst case I can move it. 
isn't this adhesive is not permanent but you do need to make sure it's stuck down all right noise noise just need a power switch And let's throw it together. So notice, it does go together. It's not sticking out any more than... Uh, than it would be normally. It does fit nice and flush. Pop in my flash cart and uh, let's take a look. Whew. At high brightness, that is. Uh, that reset my Game Boy. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> a little thirsty. So, oh, another thing I forgot to mention. One of the nice things about this kit is it remembers your settings. So if I set this to uh, black and white there. Next time I boot it up, oh, I guess it doesn't remember the color palette. It at least remembers the brightness settings. But that's good to know. Let's test out. Let's see some uh, screen tearing tests here. I'm actually going to set the Game Boy down. Focus the camera. And so again, like I mentioned before, uh, when this S crosses in scrolling, the screen does actually give a uh, reset there. And even the OEM LCD doesn't handle that pretty well. Doesn't handle that well, excuse me. Can we focus better? What's going on here? All right, I guess that's as good as it's going to get. I've got to bring it out a little. There we go. That looks better. So... As I'm watching this, the only time I see an issue with the LCD is when that S crosses right there. And I think I see another frame being dropped. So when that S crosses and then the T-ish? No. The G. There's another frame being dropped. I think it's related to the... Um, Well, that's interesting. I think it's related to um, the resets there, so let's try the other test. This one doesn't have any resetting in it. I oh, know, I'm still seeing that frame drop. This is worst case scenario though. I'm looking for this. It does look really darn good otherwise, but it, it it's there. It's very subtle, but it is there. I don't think it's going to be very noticeable in an actual game. Oh, now it remembered my palette. Interesting. Maybe I just reset it too fast the first time. Let's try Zelda DX here. <laughs> Here's DX in black and white on a Game Boy Color. Oh, shoot. No, I wanted the other save. The other save I have right at the beginning of the game so we can test the uh, that weird chain artifact that uh, 
some games have trouble with, or some kits, rather. Okay, and so we can see that there is some ghosting, some artifacts. If we look at these posts here, when the screen changes, you could see, I'll have to like try and take a picture of that or something. Maybe I can uh, get something on video and overlay a static image. Uh, but you can see where those posts are, and let's take a look at this chain here. So this chain, you can see it's flickering, and if we change screen, it looks like it handles that properly. Older kits, or other kits, um, when you switch screens, the chain would stay in place until the screen transition is complete instead of sliding with the screen. So that's handled properly. There is still some of that, uh, that ghosting, but I think that's related to the LCD itself. I think that's just just part and parcel to having an IPS LCD. I don't think that that's anything they can program out. But otherwise it does look darn good. I just love these color palettes, man. Okay, so this super pink one, it's still in color. It's just really pink. I don't know what's up with that. But there's full color like normal. It's just easier to reset the Game Boy than to reach around and hit that button. All right, what else should we test? Let's take a look at the gradients, just so I can show off the color palettes here. So this is running in DMG mode, because this is a DMG ROM. Uh, you can boot it in the Game Boy Color palettes if you want, if you're holding like B and up or down or start or whatever, you know. You'll have to look up the palette table, but I just wanted to do that so I could show off these. You can compare it to the uh, original DMG kit, I think it's pretty cool. But I'll take some pictures of this and I'll post an, uh, an imager album and I also just did the DMG IPS V3 kit. I have an imager album for that too. I'll, I'll post that in the description just so you can compare the color palettes. Because that is actually the same manufacturer. All right, let's do one more thing. And I could just put the game in, but I have the EverDrive, let's test the EverDrive. So I will say, when you're using an EverDrive, it is within your best interest to uh, run it on minimum or low brightness. Now I wasn't really watching the screen, but I was watching the phone and I just saw some weird artifact. I don't know if that was the phone or the screen, but I haven't seen that again now that I'm actually looking at the screen. I'll have to review the footage. And when I transition to a new map there, it did drop a frame in. Yeah, I do notice it dropping frames. It's kind of a bummer. I was hoping this would be like the end, the end all kit for Game Boy Color. I will say though, I'm only noticing the dropped frames because I'm looking for them. I think if I was just playing normally and I wasn't the way I am, it would be fun. Oh, I just noticed another glitch there. Let me try. It might be the EverDrive, so let me try the actual game. See how it fares. And I'm going to go ahead and run up to... I don't actually remember the name of the city. I'm in Viridian City. I'm going to, or am I going to Viridian? Good Lord. 
All you Pokemon fans are probably yelling. Oh, Earthquake on a flying type. What's wrong with me? Get that item. Get the berry. That mockery that they did to Viridian Forest. What city is this? Pewter City. Okay, that's it. I knew it wasn't Viridian. I thought it wasn't Viridian. <laughs> I will say I haven't seen that screen glitch. So I think... I wonder if that's just related to the EverDrive and sucking way more power. Let's crank up the brightness. Is that the max? That's probably the max. I just want to see if we get that screen glitch again. Yeah, so far I'm not seeing it. So it looks like this kit might not play well with high power consumption carts like, um, for example, an EverDrive or an Easy Flash Junior. Uh, I should test the Junior too, just to be sure, but I'll do that off camera, mostly because I have no idea where it is at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's, this is a very nice kit. It definitely still has a few issues, but despite the occasional dropped frame, I still like this one way more than the Funny Plane Kit because those those color palettes are just so cool for um, for the old DMG games if you play the original Game Boy games and not the Game Boy Color Enhanced or the Game Boy Color games. You get those custom palettes or, you know, if you want to, you just play your Game Boy Color game in black and white. Just pretend you're playing on a classic Game Boy. I just think that's so cool. Yeah, I'm not seeing that screen get screen glitch again. <clears throat> I think it's safe to say that that was being caused by my EverDrive, or not specifically by the EverDrive, but by the by likely the increased power consumption of both the LCD kit and the EverDrive. Um, but at this point, I think I've said pretty much all I need to say. All I can say, at least. I'll have to play with this more off camera, see if I notice any egregious issues in some other games. Oh, I should try Pokemon Pinball. I don't think I have it on my EverDrive, though, so that's not gonna... I would need to test the actual cart. I have no idea where my actual cart is, either. Uh, so yeah, I'll go ahead and update my spreadsheet with the power consumption, and I'll go ahead and measure the screen brightness in Lux, and I'll update the spreadsheet and throw a link down in the, in the description as well. And uh, otherwise, I think that's, that's all I've got to say. Um, actually, no. One more thing. I do want to thank Retro Game Repair Shop for providing this kit and sending it to me. They did send me this kit completely free of charge, um, but I do still want to say that my opinion on this kit is my own. They, they didn't they didn't pay for anything. They sent me the kit just so I can I can show off the install, show some of the features here, and uh, give a give an honest review of it. And yeah, I'm I'm really liking it so far. It was a really cool kit. There are a few little uh, little things that I think they they need to work on, get worked out. Uh, but until then, still a fantastic kit. I think 
you know, if you sh if you shop around on AliExpress, you'll definitely be able to find them. If you shop around on eBay, you'll be able to find them from China. Uh, probably not from any domestic sellers at the moment. I know Retro Game Repair Shop is going to stock these as soon as he gets them in st Well, actually, I think he has them in stock right now. I think they're going to be listed within the next couple days. And um, I know some other sellers are going to have these shops as well. Uh, almost definitely Retro Modding, probably Handheld Legend. Uh, the, the usual suspects. Um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and throw a link to where you can pick up one of these kits. And... Yeah, I guess I'll play more. Yeah, I haven't seen that screen glitch once since I switched over to the actual... Oh, there it was. Right then. Right as I was saying something interesting. It seems more frequent with the EverDrive for sure. Because I've been playing with this for probably five minutes now. And I only got the one glitch. And then with the EverDrive, played with it in 30 seconds. I got two glitches. But, yeah... This is, uh, this is pretty cool. So I think I'm going to end the video here. I keep saying that, but I'm actually going to do it this time. Don't test me. I'm crazy. I'll do it. I just want to show the title screen with the different palettes. Well, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.